Welcome back, sisters and siblings, to season five of Sister Brunch. We're the podcast that brings you the stories of Black women and gender expansive people thriving in entertainment and media. We have had a truly beautiful, amazing array of guests this season, so be sure to head to our website, sisterbrunch.com, to find all of our previous episodes from this season and from seasons one through four. You can also follow us on Instagram at Sister Brunch Podcast. Now, if you are a longtime listener, you know that I love to share occasionally some stories about how I met our guests and... I could not wait to tell you about how I met today's guest, Asia Nichols. So it actually starts like this. I'm going to take you back to me being 16 years old. I know it's like what it goes that far back because when I was 16, I unfortunately went to see a double feature of The Shining and The Exorcist. Um, I don't know what God, well, I mean, it was the cool thing to do. All the other kids my age were doing it. So I go to see this double feature and basically I am traumatized for much of my adult life afterwards. So a few years later, having trouble sleeping, having trouble being alone at night, I see a therapist and my therapist says, don't watch horror movies. That's the thing. She helps me unpack that, 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 that <laughs> seeing those double features. And then in 2021, I think it was 2021, I get an email asking me to be a judge for a 48-hour short film competition. I love these. It's this amazing way to find incredibly talented people. I mean, if you can make a short film in that amount of time, I know you are good. You know you are good. And so I say yes right away. And then it turns out it is a horror competition, a 48-hour horror competition. I'm like, well, I already said yes. I'm going to have to do this. I watched this film, Dada Luz, and already the fact that I could watch it all the way through and not be scared because I was engrossed in the filmmaking said so much about this filmmaker, but also None of us, none of the judges could believe that she made this film in 48 hours. And the only way we knew she had to have is that there were requirements that they had, that had to be included in the film. And they didn't get these requirements just until before they made the film. And I, as soon as I saw it, I knew that I was witnessing brilliance. I was witnessing a person whose stories we need um, and then I got to know Asia better and I am now, I've got my claws in her <laughs> and I'm doing everything I can to support her career, support her as a writer and a director. She's a playwright. And that's just the beginning of who this woman is because she also is a world traveler. So I am so excited to bring her on. Welcome to Sister Brunch, Asia Nichols. Thank you, Fanshin. That may, I feel like I want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> that really, I had when you took it back to childhood, and I'm like thinking, wow, you have me thinking about my first time watching horror, and it is traumatizing. So I get that, but I did not know that that was your your story or your intro to to the horror room. So. It, it was, and and you know, I have to draw a line, but your work mm -hmm. is different because first of all, it's about impact, and we'll we'll talk about it more. Just. Um, you know, you want to say something with your stories. And I think that really makes a difference. It's why then the first feature I saw once I decided I would be okay was Get Out. And it was another reason because it was this, there's a message there. There are things for, and so when I can focus on that and not the eerie elements. Um, and we should also say you're not, you're really, it's, it, horror is is too small of a label to put you in. Um, so, what I'm going to do first is ask you to take us back. We always do this with our guests in the beginning is to take us as far back as you want to take us and talk to us about your journey as a storyteller. What brought you to sitting here today where you are as a storyteller? Wow. Okay. I'm going to go back to um, just right before I started screenplay writing. My husband and I were doing a blog called Our First 100 Days, and we started blogging right after our our wedding from St. Lucia, where we were married. And um, 
it 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 was a every day we had to do a his and her blog. He's blogging about our day. I'm blogging about it. People are calling me up like, "Girl, did you read your husband's blog?" <laughs> <laughs> and then you call it, you know, like it was fun to see our various perspectives on on a single day, and that kind of got me in the the habit of writing daily, because before that I was um I was uh you know I I was into I'm messing up. <laughs> 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 but I was into um, a lot of different things. I kind of like to explore a lot of different arts and, and, and crafts, but I'd never thought that I would really take on writing full time. And we took that first 100 days idea to the road when we decided we wanted to travel and be no, well, we didn't say we wanted to be nomads at that time, but we did want to 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 experience adventure in a relationship. So we were doing our first 100 days of vagabonding. And then from there, <laughs> from there, we ended up vag vagabonding into Rajasthan in India and met an oh amazing goodness. couple from, from, um, from Mumbai. And we ended up staying up all night talking with that couple. They were filmmakers. And honestly, I can't remember what our conversation was about because we had drinks that night. <laughs> <laughs> but it was um, an amazing, just good times with people we were meeting for the first time. Just an amazing instant connection. And two weeks later, I get a call from one of the people that I met, um, one of the, one of the, the couples, one of the 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 guy in the relationship and he he connected me to a director who was from Ghana who was looking for a screenwriter and he said that he thought that I would be a really good fit now i don't know what we were talking about but at the time i was not a screenwriter <laughs> wow. and so she wanted to explore mental health in Ghana since i do have a background in um social work and work for like women's empowerment organizations and things like okay, that. Okay. See, see Asia, you, you started right with the vagabonding and I'm like, who was little Asia in Vallejo, California? Like what was your life like that you ended up deciding to be world travelers together? Like, how, yeah. What, <laughs> who was little Asia? That's what I want to know. It's so crazy because I have so many different phases of my life. And with this lifestyle, it just seems like, you know, you're kind of being reborn in each country. Mm. <laughs> but listen, your little Asia grew up in a very devout Christian home, you know, and okay. I was in church plays okay. and, you know, did the welcome and everything you could think of because it was a very small church that I grew up in. And um, I met my husband um, at in high school. So I was in um, in high school when we met and we, you know, dated for a little bit and then we ended up going uh, our separate ways. I ended up studying mm -hmm. for... Uh, law to be a paralegal and then to see if I wanted to explore uh, being an attorney. I worked for a family <laughs> law firm and um, I decided that I liked and I enjoyed talking to people a lot more than, <laughs> than I enjoyed working in that. But it, it, it just didn't feed me. It did not feed yeah, me. Yeah, you weren't going to have any friends as an attorney. That's That we know. The attorneys don't have friends. Yeah. <laughs> the Sorry. Exactly. No, that's real. That's real. I mean, like, you know, the attorney, she kept to herself and I would have like all these conversations with the clients to help them to prepare for getting up there and saying what they need to say. And it just always felt, I felt fed there. So then I, mean, I decided mm. to explore social work and I went and moved to, from Vallejo to, um, and so I'm, I don't know if I mentioned that I grew up um, raised by um, uh, my mother, she was a single mother. My father was, um, you know, he was in and out of the picture. He's very active now, you know, checking in. <laughs> Interesting. Checking in, but he um, he led a lifestyle that kind of changed um, his, our, the path of our, you know, our family. So my sister and I, we were, my mom had a daycare. So it was always a lot of kids running around. There was always, um, fairy tales being played in the background, mm. you know, because my mama had this whole collection of Shelley Duvall's fairy tale theater. So, you know, we had that on for the kids. We would pull, you know, we would play around, dress up and all that. So that was, um, that was pretty, that was pretty consistent in our household. So from there, I ended up leaving um, Vallejo to go to Sacramento and explore, but I explored um, working for nonprofits, um, women's mm. empowerment and, and, and things like that. And okay. Then I decided 
my husband and I ended up reconnecting and we decided we were getting married. We decided to get planned this big wedding, decided to get married in St. Lucia and or have our honeymoon in St. Lucia. And in the planning okay. phase, we saw how much money it was costing. So we ended <laughs> up, you know, it was costly. So we ended up having to I ended up making a choice like I can spend all we can spend all our money here or I can decide that where we're honeymooning is where we are going to get married. I will see you guys later. Yes, Jesus, there that's you what go. we're doing. <laughs> the moment we got to St. Lucia, I, you know, and we really just went with nothing. I went with a dress. I had no shoes. He bought a suit out there. And that kind of was the beginning yes. of our traveling experience. I knew mm. I wanted to stay. I knew I wanted, I was like, I can stay and sell rum punch. That's cool with me. <laughs> I'm not going back. <laughs> there was just an energy. There was just an energy. It was a shift inside of me. So we ended up going to, um, after that, I, we had to sit down and say, okay, what are our core values? Do you know, do we want to go get the mm. house? Or do we want to have children, all this stuff? And at the mm. end of the day, our core value at the top of that list was adventure. And we're yes. like, okay, are we living adventurously right now? No. So what do we need to do? <laughs> yes. Yes. And we ended up, um, I ended up doing a lot of research to see where is the best place to travel if you're going to do a year, round the year, I mean, round the, round the world trip for one year. And it became clear to me that Thailand is where we needed to begin. It was the easiest place. And usually the easiest place <laughs> where a lot of people have uh, retired, where people go mm. from the States. <laughs> it's the States and retired. So that's, it was a lot of that. Because there's kind of communities already established there that it's can help you get exactly. acclimated. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So we ended up going to Chiang Mai. I um, was trying to find my way there because I knew I couldn't do anything in the, the, the nonprofit or social working realm when we're, when I know we're going to be leaving a community that usually has a lot to do with when you're working in like those nonprofits, you do need to know the community. You need to stay yeah. around to be able to, you know, make the moves that you need to make. And I knew I couldn't do that. I tried, I went to um, Buddhist temple to help out. <laughs> there was a Buddhist temple for um, stray dogs because at Thailand you see so many stray dogs at the Buddhist yeah. temple. So I went to help out there um, mm -hmm. and realized that it's just not something that I can sustain. So how can I? What do? How do I um, give to of of what what I am and and contribute to the world on mm -hmm. this journey? You know, I tried painting, but it was too hard to carry all those things in our backpack without it messing mm -hmm. up every time we hopped on a new plane so then because we were doing our blog our, our first 100 days of vagabond i just continued to write after our first 100 days of vagabond the 100 day 100 days was over and i wanted to continue to share my stories so i did some travel writing and then i realized that it was it takes it took a lot out of me to continue to write about our lifestyle while I'm trying to experience it. Oh, you know, interesting. I didn't want to take any pictures anymore. I got tired of taking pictures. I got tired of writing about, we were starting to like really live and we were immersing into these different communities and cultures. You know, we lived in the backwaters of Kerala and India. We lived in the village in Tamil Nadu and, and, and things just started to feel a lot more sacred to me than to share mm. in every article. And you couldn't be present with, with the experiences because you were having to think about how am I going to write about this, right? How am I going to share this with someone else? But then you couldn't be present to, to experience it. Hello. Yeah. And, and, and I couldn't be present with oh, the pictures, taking the photo, the photos. So I got tired of taking the photos. I just it started to feel, you know, it just didn't feel good anymore to do. It wasn't mm. for me anymore. And mm. so I needed to take a break. And it might have been because we did our first 100 days. So it's like every day I'm writing about my experience. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> but I needed to take a break. But um, I, yeah, I ended up deciding that I wanted to just experience it and, and, and let these moments that I find most fascinating be sacred to me because there's messages in here for me, you know, <laughs> well, yes. I'm trying to write and find a message, you know, to wrap, make a, make a full story to share with a publication. There's a whole separate message here for me. Mm. And I wanted to just have that, um, experience that. So then Amazing. I just said, okay, if I'm not going to be travel writing, what is it? And then I guess it ended, it turned out to, uh, turned out to be fiction writing and, and weaving in some of those experiences. This is Asia, and you're listening to Sister Brunch.
I want you to describe your genre. One, because you don't fit into any one particular genre, and it's another thing that I love about you. Uh, we can say unconventional, but that doesn't do it. It doesn't do it for me, for sure. It does not grasp who you are and what you do. So how do you describe your writing? It is. I mean, I agree with you. It's tricky. I mean, I'm always like rewriting bios. Like, how do I <laughs> say this? But I would say it is offbeat. It's uncanny. Um, there was a term in short fiction writing when I started writing short fiction, and I, I'm a lover of Neil Gaiman. So he his um, short works inspired a lot of my my style too. It was um, a slipstream was what I what I came across, and that was like mm. a hodgepodge of like. Um, all the genres um, together, but then it's the underlying drama, you know, genre with the uh, fantasy, little moments of surrealism, moments of horror, moments of science fiction. And, mm -hmm. um, but it's really, it is hard to, I don't know, contain, I would say weird fiction, uh, uh, but I would say uncanny is a good way to say it's, it's, it's an mm. uncanny style. It's a very offbeat, uncanny, absurdist sometimes style. And um, and then you take that and it is within a black identity, right? Like a black woman identity. And so it's already it's already kind of unconventional again or uncanny, but also within, a, you know, within an identity group where. I think, you know, we just haven't had the opportunities or the encouragement or the inspiration to tell those stories. Even when we think about your references to the kinds of authors that you like, it's hard to find author, Black women authors, Black gender expansive authors to say it's like this kind of writing. And and again, it's why I love you because you are that person. You are now that author that other people, I think, can can refer to, that screenwriter others can refer to, that director that others can refer to. Um, but right. And 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 you don't shy away from the blackness of it, like in, in the in the most beautiful and also the the kind of most um, the, all the ways that that blackness comes with resilience and joy and challenges. You find ways to pepper that into a lot of your work also. And I just want to I just want to add that 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 that's also what makes it so um, beautiful and unusual. I mean, you know, I mean, I definitely cannot write these tales. Like, I love twisting tales, right? And I cannot do, I, there's no possible way to do that without doing it through my Black woman, living all out of one backpack on the road gaze. <laughs> like, at the yes. end of the day, my experience with this um, this lifestyle, it it is going to be very different than people I'll meet on the road. I'll meet a lot of white people on the road and their whole experience is very different. When we're talking about we, they're meeting people and immersing into communities, I'm hearing a very different perspective than what it is that my experience is when I go into these different communities mm, because mm. they're not, a lot of times people have not, I mean, we're living really off the grid, right? And they haven't, they'll tell me they haven't ever met a Black American, didn't know there were Black Americans. So it's something that, um, a lot of even from how I ended up having to change my my hair along the journey, mm. because, you know, when I started out, I had a grandmother who was a hair presser and I was slit, you know, <laughs> and then when I started out on the road and got rid of the products and all that stuff. Um, maybe I had I had an experience where a young girl would see pictures from my past and um on Facebook and tell me that she liked the straight hair better mm. when I was growing out my fro. And I was realizing she hadn't seen a fro ever. She never seen, you know, locks or anything. And I just, those types of experiences um, were just part of this journey into writing the um, versions of tales that explore hair, like subverting ideas of Rapunzel and all of that. Because this is, but from from a, a black woman's perspective, because this is, it that was uncanny. Like to see how the conditioning mm, yes. is so so blatant around the world. That was my first experience with just global conditioning. Mm. And I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna ever. I mean, there's no way that I can contribute to that. So I need to figure out how to 
how to flip that that idea, how to change his perspective and add more to the story because the people are not getting that, that. You know, we were staying in villages where there was one TV and we all got around that one TV and whatever yeah. images are shown on that one TV is what you think it's the rest of the world see. is. Mm. And then you show up and Russ shows up and, and then they have to rethink. And, and so th this is what I love too, is that you're just two people, right? So the ways you reflect it when you're traveling is through these two people, which is huge, right? Because they're seeing this in person, they're seeing two people that they have heard or only seen extremely limited representations of. But then we couple that with your work, which can and will be known worldwide, then you're also, it's this opportunity to give of yourselves, you know, as storytellers to a wider audience. I love that you gained deep attention from Terrence Nance, which makes complete sense. I mean, I think if we do think about a filmmaker who we might label his his work as uncanny, um, that we you know that you've gained this attention from Black Star Film Festival, which also is one of our best, and and also I think appreciates. Um, non-essentialist de depictions of blackness which yeah. which is what you do as well so let's talk about so unfair and actually i think i think it'd be great to even give an example of of one of your stories that has gained attention would, would, whatever you want to choose i mean you've gotten the sf film rain and grant you've uh you know you you did really well at, at black star so whatever you want to choose and i think it'd be beautiful to like actually go into one of your stories talk about what happens in one of your stories okay okay so someone fair came from um this uh, one of my stories that i that i wrote called beautiful beneath the sun it was a short fiction story for a anthology looking for black and brown creators to reimagine these very familiar tales and i decided to take rapunzel and reimagine that because that was the first time that i was experiencing um my my natural hair because i grew up in a hair salon that where my grandma was a hair my grandmother was a hair presser and i never really got to learn how to 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 um to manage my hair and I manage and love up on yeah, the the thing Love that was them. coming uh, yes exactly yes. exactly yes. and it was a beautiful experience but being on the rubble the way we have is not always that i can find the products so mm. you know we in india mm. and i'm making figuring out how to you know get neem and make something <laughs> you know make something that that can give me the moisture that i need right. and it was a journey and i ended up writing this tale that was um based on a lot of just living in these very natural settings and the young girl had forest hair you know and so there was uh, a lot of um it's a very planty tale where she ends up having mm -hmm. to maintain and contain her forest hair so that she doesn't break the rules of this land and break this this um glass ceiling which her grandma would have to pay for if she did so her grandma tells her to keep that under wraps and she has to, you know, fight back against these ideas and, and go on this solo journey of self-discovery and self-exploration and self-love to then break free through, literally, through this world that she, that had been contained in. Um, so it sounds like a terrarium, you know, like if you picture a terrarium mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and, and that is pretty much the tale, right? <laughs> She's living in a terrarium. And uh, yeah, so that tale ended up, I ended up adapting it into a short film when I saw the opportunity that um, at Black Star to get to create a to or to submit short film or short screenplays to submit short screenplays. I adapted into a short screen, screenplay and it ended up lucking up and winning the Black I mean, Black Star. Did you? I know you didn't just say lucking. That that was not luck. I know you didn't just say that. It was that. my first time. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, <laughs> Other people recognize the brilliance. Yes. Well, it was it was a beautiful experience because I had been on the road. I mean, like the way I traveled just with the backpack and wearing the same outfit every day. You know, <laughs> I had like I just came home um, to for a visit home. And that was its own culture shock because we had been around mm. so many people. We We weren't used to hearing English. Right. Like it became very interesting because the first person we, we connected with on the road um a friend of ours in thailand 
he's a black guy and he's been out there for a minute and he was like just trying to, you know, he's learning Thai and he's 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 pretty fluent in Thai, but he didn't go home as frequently. So he didn't know um, when he went home, it felt weird to communicate in English because he almost felt like he was forgetting his words. That's what he was saying. Because yes. Shorthand to actually communicate. You right. know, so, you know, big words out the door. So yeah. he ended up, um, he was telling us that experience. And at the time we were so new to the world. We we're like, oh, okay, that's interesting. I didn't, you know, I didn't relate to it, but I definitely did after about a year. <laughs> <on> the... <laughs> so, You're like, you know, words, what are they? What language am I speaking? Right. It felt weird. It felt very weird. And also just hearing, because we came back around Christmas time. So hearing the values mm. um, after having to shed so much mm. from hearing like how everyone's trying to buy you know everything for everyone and their mama you know and I'm like come on now like I'm I don't like, even and I didn't we were living off of savings so we really didn't have very much so then I felt the pressure of okay um do I need to like you know I mean we, I just didn't feel like I fit in there anymore I, mm. we were living very minimally it's not like I'm gonna buy a bunch of gifts for Christmas for anybody my mom laughed and said you know y'all came back and I, I feel like if y'all have a kid I can buy that kid a pencil and they'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, how is that not a beautiful thing? And I was going to say, aren't, weren't you two the gift? Y'all were, couldn't you be wrap yourselves in a little bow and be like, <laughs> we were, no, 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 we totally were. We totally were, but we didn't, we were so, we started off differently. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we didn't, we left absolutely. differently. Like I had trunks yes. of clothes and things at home that I told my mom, just give away, give away the wedding, just give it all away. So she just kind of didn't recognize me. She definitely never seen me with a fro. She didn't recognize me, but she thought it was interesting. I mean, we were meeting parents, which was interesting. We were meeting parents when my mom would say, Call, go ahead and talk to, you know, talk to my daughter and son-in-law because these parents would be stressing that their child decided to get up and go to Egypt and live in Egypt and they mm. no longer can relate. And there is mm. that disconnect can feel, you know, that's heartbreaking. So she was trying to get a little more insight. We would talk to these parents and say, okay, she's like, why would she want to do that? Why would he want to do that? Why would they, why? Hey, Sister Brunch family, we are so grateful for the love that you have shown us on this amazing journey with our guests and our co-hosts for five seasons. If you have been enjoying these inspiring stories and perspectives, we would love to invite you to take the next step and become a member of our Sister Brunch Patreon community. As a Sister Brunch patron, your support allows us to continue celebrating and amplifying the voices of Black women and gender expansive people thriving in entertainment and media. You will play a vital role in our mission to uplift and empower underrepresented voices in film, TV, and entertainment. Thank you so, so much for your support. We were supposed to be on the road for one year, but the people that we met on the road and showed us different ways to do this lifestyle longer. And we just kind of, it kind of, we fell into it. For instance, before we left, everyone was saying, don't go to India. Um, doctors were telling us, don't go to India. It would be very challenging if it's your first time on mm -hmm. uh, abroad. Mm -hmm. And we ended up, meeting someone who's like this is all bs you know <laughs> this is people who are just trying to tell you tell you um just because they don't know they might have not right it. i just came back from india and so we ended up getting a visa to try and experience india and it ended up being um applying for a visa and it ended up being a six-month visa so wow. if we were going to stay one year on the road and that was our plan well six months of that was going to be in india so that kind of changed, that changed our plans. You know? Right. That's where I ended up meeting the couple who introduced me to um, screenwriting in a way, like introduces me to my first screenwriting opportunity. Yeah. But yeah, so um, basically <laughs> when I came back, bringing it full circle to when I came yes. back and made that story stranded, having to like, you know, figure out my and figure out and represent with my fro around the world and have people asking me so many questions i mean i'm in like a, a kitchen with a, a bunch of um wives and daughters <laughs> and grandparents and like everybody just around me about like 30 people and they're asking me like you know and this is in um Raj, this is in this is in jodhpur it's like a blue city I think Jodhpur is a blue city in, in, in India. What's blue city mean? The whole city is blue. 
The whole city is entirely blue. The colors? You mean like the houses and things or what? The houses. Wow. I didn't know they had colors for the cities. The whole, well, this city, this city has. This, this city is all this blue. Is all blue city. So we are mm -hmm. in this all blue city and they are, um, they have my, like a whole family of women, just women, m multiple generations just around me and then ask me questions about my hair and ask me if I have a baby, will my baby come out with curly hair and all these questions. <laughs> and I'm like, this is fascinating <laughs> to me to be able to share a part of myself because they're sharing so much with me about their, their, their way of existing on this planet, their way yes. of communing with um, the spirit realms on this, on this planet and their finding finding ways to in that in that um they're finding that magic in something very visible which is my hair so I don't know I just it I was interesting it. so anyway writing that tale coming back to the states after all of these experience and like I said even there like after all of those experiences not like showering outside using my bathroom and all out everything <laughs> outside, like really doing like really doing because we you know, living off of, I don't know if I mentioned how much we had, we took like 10,000 and we lived off of that for about two years. What? <laughs> okay. Because we have a salary question on the episode and I was like, take that question out. We're not going to even ask Asia how she and Russ do this. Just take that salary. I, we were and there you go. at some point for breakfast. But the wealth. Pancake for breakfast. I lost so much weight. <laughs> Okay, that's not good. I want you now. See, I do need to know that y'all took good care of yourselves. So eating is beginning, no. In the beginning, we mm. what we did, we were living off of a different. We didn't need as much. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. really didn't need yeah. as much. As, yeah. You know, my lifestyle yes. of eat. I love to eat. You know, Mama, <laughs> I love to cook. Russ does too. You know, we enjoy food, but at the time. Our food just felt it was a very different kind of nourishment. You know, it was it was that we didn't need it. Get I your protein I, in, you get in, you get your carbs in, and that fuels you for the day. And that's all you some nice rice and beans. I mean, it is it is the thing that fuels most of the world is rice and beans. And yeah. And we yeah. didn't have meat. We didn't have any meat because that would obviously cost more. So a lot mm -hmm. of stuff we ate, we had to go pick, you know. So we would go pick like the lady finger. They call them the lady lady fingers. And and um we would pick them, but that, that's okra. So we would pick the okra <laughs> yes. and pluck it off and you know, cut we would it was everything that we ate we had to actually carry. So at the end of the day, we didn't really need that much. We just needed enough to to get to the next day. <laughs> I love and it. it. Was, it was cool. So anyway. Coming back after that experience and, and looked at my mom was like, she didn't recognize me, you know, mm -hmm. and then going to Black Star Film Festival because they were beautiful enough to, to fly me out there. That was a beautiful yes. experience. That was my yes. first film festival experience. And I'm literally rocking the same clothes I've had for the past two years. <laughs> <laughs> You're washing them by hand, so they're all faded. <laughs> yes, yes. Still haven't figured out what I need to put in my particular 4C hair for it to, you know, just have the moisture that it needed. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm still figuring it out. And I felt very, very excited and welcome to That space for me in the Black Star Film Festival was amazing. I, mm. I was, It was just the creatives, the short films that they were showing, everything was just, just experimental. It was yes. unique. It was yes. inspiring. And I, me getting able to come back from the States and be kind of thrusted into that situation. That was a beautiful experience for me. Yes. Um, it, 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 it definitely felt, felt like home. And I, and I, and I, you know, I, I won't ever forget it. So it, the I short it. ended up winning the the Black Star Film Festival award. <laughs> yes. short, it's, in the short, it's not a short film; it's a short the short screen the screenplay. Yes, so I had a reading, so I had my first stage reading reading there also, and that was interesting to hear my my words being read out loud. It's like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I wrote it was, that. It was a trip. <laughs> it was a trip because you just you got these things going on in your head, but you don't always know how someone else will will receive it and they really like mm. embodied these characters in a way that really made me very excited to continue screenwriting so that was a long I, long answer and i hope i love that answer i love that answer 
and it it so it takes me into a question and you know this is so tough because i could stay on with our guests for hours and hours so i you know i can stay on with you for hours and hours we're planting seeds we will have you back always check up on you we're here to support you but um but i do want to take this into cuz i'm certain you've planted lots of seeds for for me for sure and our listeners you do coaching now for people who want to have your kind of lifestyle and still be storytellers, um, you're available for coaching for that. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah, I'll talk a little bit because it's very new for me. I've met yeah. a couple of uh, fellow filmmakers on the road, um, one through SF Film. I'm a part of, um, I'm a fellow of SF Film for the um, Rainin Grant and the SF Film Jurassic residency where you stay 30 days in the Santa Cruz mountains and try not to and avoid mountain lions, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that was a more adventures, experience. just more adventures for you. <laughs> experience. But I met a couple of filmmakers and I would talk and I told them, I met one filmmaker on the, um, there's a platform where the filmmakers get to talk and share their different stories. And I met one filmmaker on that platform from SF film. And she was currently in Paris, so she's Parisian, and she was making a, a short film. And I told her, I'm in Paris mm -hmm. right now. Let's, let's uh, you know, connect. So we ended up connecting. Um, I got to see and experience being on a set for the first time because she was in the process of making her short film. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up going to some really cool concept house where we have <laughs> breakfast in, like, you know, the different house, the different areas in the in a home where you can eat. Like, you can eat in the bedroom. You can eat in the um, oh, living room. We amazing. ended up getting the coveted bathroom. And we had, <laughs> we had a tub and a little uh, table between us to have our breakfast. It was amazing. So she, I told her about my experiences, and she said she wanted to know how to, for instance, house it, because that's how we um live on our budget some a lot of times we're able to and that's how this this one year intentional one year trip became what it's about 13 years now oh we, my we, god i was gonna ask you 13 <laughs> amazing oh this this is um it'll make 13 years in october because we actually left to travel the first our, when we went to thailand we left on october 31st so we left on Halloween. So <laughs> the tickets were the cheapest on October 31st. Wow. So, yeah. So I was telling her about my my journey and how we continued this lifestyle on the budget that we have, as, as both as freelance creators. And house sitting is a big part of that. Someone introduced us to that in Nepal, a, a blogger. So we decided to do it. She's like, if you don't want to fight for Wi-Fi, house sitting might be the vid. And you both are writers. Yes. House sitting would be the thing for you. So we've been doing that right now. I'm house sitting on a gallery like farm, you know, so this is um, in the central Mexico in the mountains. There's about like six chickens running around here <laughs> <laughs> and there's a dog and there's a cat. And we have a seventh chicken that just appeared the other day, which is really weird because, you know, <gasps> me being in a horror, I literally was just writing about a woman turning into a chicken <gasps> and suddenly they, the next day, I'm counting chicken to make sure that they're all here. And I'm like, wait a minute. We have a seventh. She showed up. She showed. She was like, did you call? Somebody Hello. called me. Somebody called me. <sighs> I'm still trying to figure out where this chicken came from. But it's pretty, you know, my sister was like, okay, you might need to stop writing. You don't write your reality. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> If you are listening to this episode, you can watch the episode on our YouTube channel, True Jalo Media. It's on youtube.com slash True Media. And you can see this gorgeous house. So Asia has a bit of an echo um, because she is in an amazing house. And every time we, we Zoom together, I'm so jealous of the background. <laughs> the house that your house sitting in is always just beautiful. You coach people how to sustain themselves by doing house sitting and then living as creatives. I right, right. So she amazing. was my first client. Yeah, yeah, she was yeah. The first she was client. My first, 
she was my first well, client, yeah, and she ended up wanting to get a house gig in San Francisco because she wanted to go to, to the SF um, film oh, film house. Nice, and nice. she ended up getting a house gig there. And so from there, I've also so two people in France I've I've worked with, and then okay. someone um from I just met a woman from South Africa who I need to schedule an appointment with also because she wants to do the same thing. I mean, it's a fun way to travel and you get inspired. And what a lot of things that um, shape my writing a lot is. I like to raid people's libraries. So anytime I come into one of these houses or yes. these spaces, a lot of time they're artists too. So I can, you know, I'm surrounded by it's basically a are... residency. Yes. Yeah, it feels like yes. residency. So I get to raid their libraries, read the different works, and then see, you know, what it is that inspires me. And my stories take uh, their, their own path from there, just depending on what I happen to be reading, which depends on what happens to be in their library. So, you know, it's, I, I think it's it. a cool way to be inspired. <laughs> Absolutely. So we will have details on how to get in touch with Asia, find, you know, have her as a coach. Listen, I'm thinking about it myself. I'm like, because I need a break from from the capitalism and the the, the maximalist lifestyle in Los Angeles. I'm like, yeah, every time I talk to him, I'm like, I, so what would be stopping me from doing this? My husband and I. So soon as soon as we we always say once we get a little bit settled, you know. But your point, what you two did is you were like, no, this is what our settled looks like is to have this lifestyle where we, you're surrounded by art, you're surrounded by creativity, you're surrounded by chickens, and there's <laughs> <laughs> there's something to that, you know, to being around that kind of life. I love it. I love it. Okay. I have to bring us to the end, which again, we will just have you back on lots and um and maybe we can even have you do kind of like correspondent world correspondent Asia Nichols, sister brunch world correspondent and and check in with us from all the places you're in. But I'm gonna take us to our signature sister brunch questions. Okay. So you, Asia, are sitting down to a sister brunch with your younger self. And I want to know, what are you both eating at this brunch? What are you both drinking at this brunch? And what do you tell her? Hmm. Okay. So I'm sitting down with younger Asia. That is, I like this question. I think that's a fun <laughs> question. Um, wow. I'm sitting with, okay. So first of all, I don't, I don't want to sit with her in her world. I don't want to go back to high school. <laughs> you know? okay. Okay. So we're going to have to bring her back here. Yeah. We're going to bring her here. So what I'm eating here is a mochahete. I have a seafood mochahete and she will have, so I got this little simmering clay pot with all the, all the juices bringing together the shrimp and the fish. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just this one. And I bring, and I'm thinking that she's going to break out a bag of flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would go very well with your dish. I think that would be really <laughs> nice. To yes, yes. Cause I still love my flaming, my flaming hot Cheetos and she is going to have an orange soda and I will match her orange soda with a margarita. Class. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we are chopping it up. We are sharing space. We are listening to music and um, I would tell her you know, before our, our evening has ended, that I would I would like her to to write me sometime. For me, the type of stuff I create <laughs> as you get into, you know, I guess we call it adulting, right? We as as you as you grow up, you can get away, at least I have, I I found it's challenging to keep tapping into the things that that made me want that incite, excited me about creating in the first place and it would be nice if she took some time out of her busy life you know and now I understand you know family members who I will tell me this when I come home you know I get that if you took some time I would love to hear from you I would love to hear what your thought process is like because I'm getting you can it's so easy to get away from that and so I, I do I do hope she takes that why she crunched on her Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> Licked the orange off. You know, licking the finger. Yes. <laughs> you know. Uh, that sweet, sweet from the orange soda. Yes. Oh. <laughs> That's beautiful, Asia. That is That's what beautiful. I oh, I love it. Asia Nichols, thank you for taking the time with us. 
I um, you've been very patient in us finally getting this call in and and I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to to have you on to share you with all of these incredible other guests that we have this season. You're just you're a bright spot in in my creative life. I'm always so excited when we get to talk and strategize. And, you know, I just I um, I'm so grateful to you. I truly am so grateful to you. And me to you, because all of our, like, I felt like usually, like I said, podcasting is very, is new to me. But if I were ever, you, you create such a beautiful space. And I feel, you know, excited and empowered when I talk to you. You have been like a champion in my life. And I feel very grateful for that. And yeah, you, the energy you have here is just, it's amazing. So I appreciate you for even inviting me to share and um, yeah. Oh, thank you, beautiful community of sisters and siblings for sharing your views, sending us questions, and engaging with us on Instagram at Sister Brunch Podcast. You can read the transcript of every episode and find show notes on our website at sisterbrunch.com. If you love video, you can watch the full video interviews on our Trujillo YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Trujillo Media. That's T-R-U-J-U-L-O Media. We so appreciate your support by subscribing to the podcast, leaving us a great review and sharing it with your friends, family, community, colleagues, anybody that can benefit from listening to our incredible guests. Season five of Sister Brunch is brought to you by Trujillo Productions. Our show creators are me, Fanchon Cox, Anya Adams, Christabel Nsiabwadi, and Brittany Turner. Sister Brunch is a Women Make Movies production assistance program project. We acknowledge that the land we record our podcast on is the original land of the Tongva and the Chumash people here in Los Angeles. Can't wait to see you next time. Take good care, everybody. Bye-bye.